So what's up, man? That's all you gonna wanna say. You man. know who you with, right? The most hardcore graffiti writer walking on this planet right now. That city was in chaos. You had crack, crime, running rapid. You had these graffiti writers that were expressing that chaos. That was basically all city in New York. Where I was walking or where I was growing up was the rubbles of segregation and, and inequalities and things like that. Most of us didn't have any money and we didn't have any, any outlets so we had to be very creative you know, at that period of time, more than, more than any time, I think, and, and that's what made us different, and I think the 80s was a very special period. I was walking around with markers and painting on trains and climbing over fences, things that I wouldn't even imagine about doing right now, today. What attracted me was the moment this train, like what they say this is a train, comes out of a tunnel and it's moving at 35 kilometers in front of you and you see a flash of colors and you're standing like this close to the train or like this and you see like a, a out of focus camera you know I wanted to participate in this in one way, one form there was the music, the break dancers there was the MCs and I came out with this crazy looking, what you would call it, abstract style in the streets. So people in the beginning were saying, what the fuck is that shit? You know, it serves good, it serves as a background. Because people, they want immediate reactions and immediate gratification and um, immediate understanding. But I was trying to evoke more of a feeling than anything else. So that's how the whole abstract and the whole freestyle of what I was doing came into effect. There was a very few people like me that were doing this type of forms and experimenting with other types of mediums and not just using um, spray cans. So I would use acrylics on trains and, and brushes I would bring and, and, and mix it up with spray paint. Sometimes, or when it was sunny outside, it was like every day, basically, you know, getting hot. Like Lady Pink said, there was two different types of people that were painting in, in that period. There was either the people that were taking the risk and painting on trains, and then there were like these um, artists that weren't taking no risks and they were just doing nice walls and you know. I was able to survive for six or seven years continually bombing the system, you know, and putting my name around. So when I came to, to Paris, I was just like, you know, I came here to uh, paint a wall. I was just burnt, you know, I was completely toasted and, you know, that I was at my last rope of life. They had this place in Stalingrad, which was like the mecca of European graffiti. So I came here to see for myself what they were doing, because I had seen some pictures from Bando, and what the Europeans were doing was very interesting because they were composing their colors in a whole different way, and they were using different subjects and different influences, while we as New Yorkers were more influenced by crime and crack and drugs and beating each other up and stuff like that. Here they had the, you know, the Parisian life to, to create and, and to, to be poetic about their approach. So I came here and I seen it and I, and I was like, that this is cool out here. So I was able to live a second time the, the, the explosion of, of graffiti, but in a different continent. I tried to go one step higher, which was um, painting on canvas and trying to, to 
refine my communication. I stand for the streets, you know, I'm not trying to sell myself out. What I'm basically doing now is the same shit I was doing back in the days, you know, but I'm just applying it to a different medium. Stencil art is bullshit. Where do they get the rough edge from? They get it from these guys right here. You know? Try to do a stencil on the side of a train. You gotta give a couple credit. A couple of them are cool, you know, but it's not the same thing. I ain't gonna open up no doors. Like no one's ever opened up doors for me. So just know that I'll be, I'll be, I'm be the one that's gonna be like, yo, it's just bullshit. It's fucked up, you know, like. I know 10 billion other artists that are much better than that. You gotta pay some sort of moves. I ain't gonna let you just walk in the party. Before I had this place here, I was very much involved in the squat scene, which they also had in England. And Seacoast also was part of that movement of, you know, taking over a building and, um, and artists come and, you know, we're not paying rent so we can really be creative. It was Seacoast's vision and Seacoast's idea it was a, a very unselfish vision. Seacoast wanted a place where he could share with other people, a studio like that. And, um, and that was what 115 was about. We brought a lot of people together. Of course, there was a lot of critics thing, saying that, you know, it's, it wasn't good what we were doing. And we didn't fit into the line of, uh, let's say, bronchéism, what's hype in Paris, you know? We weren't into those, like, into that flow. We were in front of a cité, the projects, you know? We were in front of the projects, directly in front of the projects. They were hanging out across the street. And you would think that there would be more, uh, you know, understanding coming that we were graffiti artists coming from the streets and they would like, you know, they would know we were in the same battle, in the same sort of like struggle. But it turned out that these guys, which is like the new generation, um, were just as conservative as the guys with the suit and ties. I mean, it's like hard to deal with, with dumb people, with idiots. That's all a front. I come from all that, you know? So I know I can decipher stuff like they, they're, they're thugs in the streets, but when they go home, they're like, you know, making their beds and sitting on tables and with their dads and their moms. And there was so much tension in the community of them seeing people that were trying to do things. and and jealousy also played a factor, and at the end, they just burnt it down. It's easy to, to um, destroy rather than to create. Things catch up with you. If, if you have an attitude, if you can physically do stuff like that, you know, it's just like a little sign of who you are as a person. There's no way you get, you get ahead. You know, things will just crumble implode, you wouldn't explode. Like this is what I'm doing as an artist. And this is meant to explode, you know? People see it and people will criticize it. Some people find it good, some people find it bad, but there's an exchange around it. And when you're into doing stuff like that, which is burning and destruction, there's no exchange. It's just like um, um, you implode. I respect religions and people's spirituality. And also, I respect art, you know, I don't destroy people's art, you know, because I, I know that the importance of, of making people dream and having themselves a, a purpose in life, that's our role as artists, you know, that's what gives the little spice of life, you know, or else everybody will just be basically doing the same things. And maybe at the end, this, um, something will come out of it, you know, there'll be, his vision will come into reality. We will have a place in Paris.